Up next, we have a presentation looking at the VR opportunity by Prashant Mata, who is an associate at Omer's Venture. So without further ado, please welcome Prashant to the stage. Thanks, Tom. This, uh, this event always amazes me. The community keeps growing. Uh, but what I'm ab about to talk about, and, and when that does become real, I don't know if we'll be doing this in person. We might be doing this conference in, in one of those Sulon queues. So, Sorry, Tom, you'll still be in my heart, but uh, moving on. So my name's Prashant. Uh, I'm an associate at Omer's Ventures, um, and VR is one of those areas where we've been spending a lot of time looking at opportunities. So I'm gonna spend the next uh, eight to 10 minutes talking about what's happening in the market and what are some challenges and opportunities. So I'll start off by saying um, that VR could be a huge platform in the future. What's interesting is that it's not new. It's been around for, for decades. But what's changed is over the last, I would say, five years or so, the technology has caught up and the consumer behavior has changed. What's that causing is companies are able to create immersive experiences where people can be in immersive computing environments interacting with other people or content. And that's where we're going to see a huge ecosystem of new application opportunities come up. But we're still in the early stages of development. This is just a view on how the VR ecosystem might involve, evolve in the future. Today, where we are, we're witnessing launch of first generation products. So think about PCs, think about consoles, think about smartphones, think about iPhone, the first iPhone you may have purchased, and where we are today. So the hardware and the experiences around those will only get better and cheaper. But what we do expect is as the hardware and the experiences around the hardware evolves, we'll see a robust set of ecosystem of applications emerge around this sector. That may happen in five years, that may happen earlier, but what the expectations are is by 2025, we'll have enough hardware out there in the marketplace, and enough applications and developers out in the marketplace where we'll see VR become a mainstream uh, part of our day-to-day -day lives. What's truly exciting is if you look beyond when you start to see convergence of some exciting technologies where we're seeing in the market today. Think about what happens when VR, AI, and other technologies like blockchain converge and we start to live in a world which is very different from today. We tend to live in a VR world or a virtual world. So this all is super exciting. And what that means is it's also super exciting for investors. So from a VC perspective, what we've seen over the last few years, there's a lot of money going into the AR, VR sector. Now let's break this down a little bit because this data is slightly skewed when you look at the two massive rounds uh, that Magic Leap had. But if you just think about the last quarter in itself, $500 million of VC money went into this sector. And that's encouraging. But what's also more encouraging, a lot of money has gone into hardware development as an example. That's the early generation or the early development of the sector. But going forward, what we're going to see is a lot of money going into content, application development, software, and infrastructure type plays where companies would be able to offer services that support the ecosystem. So a lot of interesting opportunities will come where folks here in this room or across the world will be building some really unique applications and really unique experiences that would help expand this ecosystem going forward. But there are also challenges. So Anna, sitting in front of me here, Anna and I, we've been uh, co-authoring a study on the VR ecosystem in Canada. So far, we have about 200 companies who have completed the study. And what we're observing is here are the three challenges we frequently come across, a lot of companies we've interacted with and a lot of companies that have uh, taken part of the study. So one is obviously market maturity. What we're noticing today is, irrespective of what people thought a year ago, there are not as many hardware in the market. There are not as many headsets in the marketplace. There is lack of distribution. What that means is, unless and until there are enough hardware out in the market, the application developers or, or, or content creators won't develop services or applications for the sector. So that has been a challenge. If you look at Oculus, if you look at some of the hardware, there have been delays. Um, on the supply chain side, it's difficult to scale uh, from, from a production standpoint, but that will change. Um, just like any other uh, sector we've seen evolve over the last little while, we'll see the hardware catch on as well. Um, what's also interesting is talent. Uh, it's something that comes up in a lot of my conversation is we're still in the early stages of the ecosystem and in the early stages of, of the development of, of the sector. 
And there are not enough people out there that have the capabilities across the VR technology stack. So I'm talking about folks that can develop content because storytelling in VR really is very different or folks that have expertise or capabilities around developing uh, software. So again, an opportunity for us to work together as, as, as enthusiasts or people who want to be in this sector uh, to work around um, educating folks or even creating opportunities in the sector. Funding. Now, I know there's a lot of money going into the sector, but investors are still very, I would say, optimistic about it, but still cautious about it, mainly because we still need to see the ecosystem catch on. We still need to see the market catch on. A lot of money has obviously gone in, but we haven't seen a lot of results in the marketplace. So as you talk to more and more investors, you'll start to hear, okay, what's unique about the use case or the product you're working on from a VR perspective, or what are the monetization opportunities? So a few considerations. So if you are thinking about potentially building a product or starting a company in this sector, here are some considerations for you. First of all, think about, if, you, if you're gonna think about financing, there are two key elements to think about. One being how your product is different. Could an incumbent like Oculus, Samsung quickly build that? Um, do you have a unique use case? Do you have the capability or the expertise to build that uh, product? Also think about how are you gonna make money in the long term? What are the different options to make money? What, could you potentially uh, sell it on an app store uh, as an application, or would you need to partner with brands to, to generate uh, mon or, 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 or monetize uh, your model? Talking about runway, so generally when, when I work with companies, we generally look at about 12 to 18 months of runway. What that means is you have 12 to 18 months of cash to build a product and invest in your company and grow that further. What, what I'm seeing in, in the market today is a lot of VR companies are, are cautious and they're looking to have 18 to 24 months. What they're trying to do is stretch it longer because no one really knows when the market may take off. So something to think about as you plan to build a product going forward. Uh, think about use cases beyond gaming. So for sure, the next little while, we're gonna see gaming and entertainment be the main use case for VR. But think about other verticals where there are gonna be a lot of opportunities. Education as an example, retail. We talked about real estate as an example. So there will be areas where there will be opportunities to innovate. And finally, desktop versus mobile. Something I've talked to a lot of companies about and a lot of entrepreneurs about, there, there, there will be opportunities in both. There will be opportunities in mixed reality, as you, as you heard from Sulon. Uh, but if you're talking about the next few years, a lot of VR um, will come in, in a tethered, tethered or desktop experience, be it Oculus. Or you might see, you know, longer term, my view is you'll probably see a larger percentage of the market uh, being more mobile or being more mobile VR experience. So that's what I wanted to share in terms of you know, considerations of you thinking about building a product or building a company or just broadly what to think of the ecosystem. I will end by saying that the VR opportunity is real, it's huge, and I'm pretty excited about working with the folks here and across Canada to build some really interesting products and some really interesting companies. Thank you. Hi, how much money have you spent or invested till now in this space? So you'll be surprised. In Canada, we haven't seen um, a lot of um, VC money go in, and, and that's gonna change. As, we, you know, as part of the study, as I was talking about, we're trying to understand what's happening in the ecosystem. Uh, but we will see over the next uh, little while more venture capital money going into this sector. We, I personally haven't done a deal yet. I've been looking at a lot of companies, and I can't wait to do one. Uh, but that's, uh, I, I don't think that's, um, it's not because of lack of trying, I think it's a matter of maturity of the market and, and our thesis around it. Um, my view is in Canada we'll see more and more traction around this ecosystem and, and that's why it's so exciting to be here. Cool, thanks.